This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to resolve one of the minor inconveniences of our flocking algorithm, which is that right now when we start our simulation, our agents start in this nice circle, but then they begin to drift away, and eventually they'll all kind of merge out away from the camera and just kind of disappear from view. Now we can resolve this obviously by increasing our camera size to try and keep them on screen longer, but eventually you see that they're getting pretty far away pretty quickly here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new behavior for our agents that will make them want to stay within a certain radius so that they'll you know, kind of stay closer, at least not, if not on screen, closer to the screen and more likely to come back on screen. So we're going to do this by creating a new behavior script. I'm going to go create C sharp script and I'm going to call this stay in radius behavior. I'll open this up in Visual Studio. This is going to inherit from our flock behavior class. And we are going to want this to have a create asset menu attribute so that we can create the scriptable object afterward. We'll pass in the menu name of flock behavior stay in radius. This is going to take a couple of variables as well here. The first is going to be a public vector2, which we'll call center. And I'm okay with that defaulting to 0, 0, because that typically is probably where we're going to want the center to be. We're also going to have a public float called radius, which I'm going to set by default to 15, but we can obviously adjust that in the inspector as we want to. We're not going to use start and update. However, we are going to want to implement our flock behavior abstract class. So we've got our calculate move here. We're going to delete the exception. And instead of what we're going to do is we're going to have this um, calculate, and really we're just using the agent in this case. What we're going to do is we're going to see how far away is the agent from the center. And based on where that position is, we may try to get back to the center a bit. So we'll do this by first creating a vector2 called center offset. This will be equal to the center minus the agent's position. So we'll do agent.transform.position. And we will actually cast this to a vector2 so that we don't have any ambiguity there as to what we're working with. And so this gives us the actual, if the, for example, the agent is one unit to the right and two units up from the center, it's actually going to give us a position or a vector 2 that is one to the left and two units down so that it'll be like a perfect opposite which is exactly what we want when we want to tell our agent to move back toward the center. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a float t which is equal to center offset dot magnitude divided by the radius. So this tells us how, how where t is basically, if t is 0, then we're right at the center. If t is 1, we're at the radius. If it's greater than 1, we're beyond the radius. Now in this case, we are using magnitude and not square magnitude. So this is a little bit less optimal of a behavior, but it's really necessary in order to get the proper um, ratio here, um, unless you want to add in a little bit more math that you would have to do ahead of time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check how close are we to the radius. If we're very close, if we're within like 10%, so if, if our t value is less than 0 0.9, then we can simply return vector2.0 and continue on our way, basically. We can say, you know, we don't, you know, we don't have to be that. Um, we can be as long as we're within 90% of the radius, we're okay, don't actually bother to change things. However, if we get within that 10% of the radius or beyond that, then we definitely want to start pulling us back. And we're going to do this simply by saying return center offset times t times t. We're going to square the t there just to give it a little bit of a um, more quadratic effect. Okay, so with that, what this does now for us is if we go back to Unity, we can create our stay in radius object, flock behavior, stay in radius. I'm going to call this stay in R15. I could potentially create other ones that are, you know, 30 units, 10 units, whatever I wanted. 
and then I'm going to create, I'm actually gonna duplicate my default flock behavior. I'll click on it and then do control D, and I'm gonna call this centered flock behavior. And I'm going to add a new behavior with our new button. Click here, I will add the stay in R15 to it. And let's see how this works right now with the um, with it with the weights and stuff as they are. So we'll hit play. Oops. And we don't notice much change because we didn't actually assign that to our flock. So I'm going to design assign the centered flock behavior to the flock itself now. And now we should see. Now right now this is actually a very strong, we see that they're, you know, the, they're kind of getting away and turning back, which is what we want, but this is a very strong impact. We're getting, you know, these really tight formations. And what, what we can do, if we want to give this a little bit more of a freeform feel to it, and less clearly a circle is defined, is that we can go back to our centered flock and we can just reduce this weight to maybe even something like 0 0.1. And then what we'll see is that we get this motion if I zoom in on them here, we see that there is a lot more freeformness there, but eventually, even those ones that are getting further and further away, eventually they will get pulled back. Some of them get pulled back immediately, others take a little bit longer, but there is this pull back to the center so that even though they have this freeform mo movement, they are still um, always coming back to the center, coming back on screen, so we're not losing our agents into the distance. So this is just one of a few different uh, ways that we can extend our flock behaviors. We'll um, look at some more of these in the future. In the meantime, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and want to see when more are coming out. Consider supporting on Patreon if you want to help make more of these videos happen. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.